Hi guys, my name is Roger, and I'm building a mid-engine supercar in the basement of my home. Let's take a look at what I've been working on this week. Alright guys, let's uh, take a look at what I've worked on this week and what I've accomplished. Um, started out this week working on the wiring harness, trying to figure out if I could uh, salvage this and utilize all the components or not. And I never could get the computer to uh, fire up and work trying to bypass all of the safety features on it. There are things like uh, theft deterrent, security devices, uh, steering column locks, different communication between uh, other computers and systems back and forth to the main computer. And I tried bypassing those for many hours and I just never could get the computer to come on and work. So I abandoned this idea and uh, well, well, we'll talk more about the wiring harness in a minute. Let me show you what else I've worked on. I was working trying to get both of these radiators plumbed with this new uh, routing of the hoses and this is what I came up with. <clears throat> and basically I'm coming from this lower tube here up and teeing off. I welded up some uh, aluminum pipes here and T's. I'm teeing off these T's come up and go to the top of both radiators and then coming out of the bottom of both radiators I come back to this other T here just to rotate and then that T comes back in and runs back to the engine here but you can see that laid out kind of neat. Let me try to get another angle here and it looks pretty good. Everything is clamped into place. Um, pretty happy with this. The hoses are out of the way of the tires and uh, everything lined up and worked pretty well. <clears throat> I also added vents to the top of both radiators and this is to let the trapped air in the top of the radiators escape. And I plumbed in these vent tubes. They come here to a T and then they run back here along and this was probably a crazy idea but i needed this tube to be as high as possible so to let the air escape without the fluid or the water in the radiators so i've actually drilled a hole here underneath this base and i'm running through this tube of the roll cage so my hose runs all through this tube all the way back and drilled a hole here for it to come out and run back into this collector tank or header tank <clears throat> that lets the uh trapped air escape and back into this tank and just in case it forces any water through this tube it'll come back here and reclaim it in this header tank and I uh, ran the engine for quite a while and it seems like that both radiators the water's flowing through both of them but the temperature stayed around uh, around 210 215 never got above that so I'm thinking the radiator plumbing now is going to work fine and until I see something that tells me different, I'm going to say that we are finished with the radiator plumbing. <clears throat> okay, back to the wiring. So, what I have ordered is, I looked at um, custom ordering two fuse boxes with just the fuses and relays in them that I need because I only need about half or two-thirds of what is existing in this factory car. There's just so many different uh, wire circuits that I just don't need things I've omitted. Here's a fuse box. <clears throat> you can see there's quite a bit in there. And I was looking at custom ordering two panels and they were going to be probably $800 to $1,000. And then I stumbled across a different device uh, called a, uh, I think it's called a PMU, Power Management Unit. It's basically the same thing as this device, the Dominator, but it does, it replaces the uh, relays and fuses with solid state switches. So the device itself is small. It'll mount here easily and it has 16 built-in circuits. So solid state circuits of relays and fuses. Now 16 circuits won't be enough to do the entire car, but it'll do most of it. And what I can do is use one of those output circuits to power a small fuse box in the front of the car. So the the main one will mount here for the 16 circuits and then I will run one output from that to the front of the car to a smaller fuse box. It'll have a few circuits just to pick up the remaining circuits that that device won't, won't utilize. And that device will be here 
Uh, actually, it'll be here tomorrow, so I can start uh, mounting it and doing some wiring. I need to figure out exactly what I'm doing for an ignition switch because, as you know, when you start turning the ignition switch on, the first notch on the ignition switch turns on accessories and powers up some circuits, and then when you shrink the car, it powers up more circuits. So I need to do a layout and plan which circuits are going to be on uh, like the ACC and which ones are going to be on a full start and start laying them out and planning to use those. Now I will be utilizing um, a lot of this wiring because the wires, the wire gauge is sized correctly for the circuits um, current draw. So I'm going to cut and pull these wires out certain one circuit at a time and utilize this wiring so I won't have to buy all new wiring. Um, we'll just start running one circuit at a time until we get them all finished. Uh, I'm not quite sure how long it'll take, but uh, probably a slow start. And then once I get used to running the circuits and programming them where they work correctly, then it should be faster towards the end uh, once I get more familiar with it. There are a couple of things that's going to be difficult, like uh, automatic headlights, uh, windshield wipers, and uh, air conditioning. But uh, we'll work on those as once we get to them. I'll probably save those for last. But uh, I think that brings you up to speed for this week. It probably doesn't look like I accomplished a lot this week, but I spent a lot of time on this wiring harness, and I have put in several hours on the car this week. But uh, this is what we've accomplished, and let me show you about the body design and the name of the car. I am working with a designer from Algeria. His name is Fatah, and he has taken my SolidWorks files, as you can see here, and started overlaying lines for the body design. This is the rear view of the car. You can see the tires, the suspension, the frame, the engine and by overlaying the lines for the body on top of my SOLIDWORKS files, it ensures that everything fits and aligns correctly. This is the initial drawing that he did for the front, side, rear, and top views. Now, we have made a few changes since this drawing and we're still making changes, but you can start to see the car taking shape. And this is a colored rendering of the side view of the car. You can see we've made a few more refinements here on the side around the door area and I think we are probably about 80 to 90 percent of the way there. There's still some more changes to be made, especially around the back glass and the rear of the car. Now as for the name of the car, uh, some of you may have already picked up on this. If you'll look in the center here of the instruments on the uh, RPM gauge, there is the word Phoenix and a Phoenix symbol. That is the name that I'm going to be calling the car. So. Most likely I'll use my last name for the manufacturer of the car, uh, but I haven't decided that for sure yet. But the car itself is a Phoenix. Well, that's going to be about it for this week's video. I'll see you guys again next week where we'll be working on refining the look of the body. And I'll start wiring on the chassis here, trying to get some circuits pulled and ran. And I'll see you guys again in one week.